다음은 그 엔비디아에서 설라비 우한 어, 박사님께서 이야기를 해주실 거고요. 엔비디아 옴니버스포 제너레이팅 버츄얼 월드라는 제목으로 발표를 해주시겠습니다. 네, 박수로 환영해 주시기 바랍니다. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. It is very nice to meet you, and it's good to be in Seoul. Um, not a great uh, weather, I think, but um, <laughs> great city otherwise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today uh, I am going to be talking on um, in the, uh, about Nvidia Omnibus, uh, which is a platform that we have for generating digital twins. Uh, before that, a short introduction about myself. My name is Pallavi Mohan. I work with NVIDIA and I come from Singapore, where I work on uh, research related to its Omniverse platform and I partner with research institutes and companies for uh, projects on digital twins. So yeah, um, let's get started. This is the agenda for today uh, and I hope you will be able to get a nice little takeaway uh, from this presentation today. So let's just address one of the most talked about uh, terms uh, these days. So you've been hearing a lot about the metaverse, and uh, there's been a lot of definitions floating around. There's been a lot of hype, and there's also been a lot of ambiguity in this term. So um, here at NVIDIA, we have actually we have been working on this vision for quite a long time now, and we have a specific position about the metaverse, um, about what it means for, for the future that we're going to be talking about. But what we understand is that we understand that virtual worlds are essential for the next era of AI. AI perception models for robots, autonomous vehicles, um, all of them require large-scale, physically accurate, simulated virtual worlds to train inside. So where do we get these virtual worlds from? First, a little bit of background. Now, if you look at traditional 3D content production for virtual worlds, traditional 3D workflows are super complex. So these workflows actually require teams with a broad range of skills, and these teams typically include your um, engineers, your designers, um, artists and engineers. We have software engineers, we have MLOps, we have data scientists, we have uh, computer vision. All of them coming together coming with their own things like global illumination, um, ray tracing, real-time ray, tra uh, ray tracing, AI, compute, and engineering simulations. Uh, we need solutions that bring in all of these together that is based on open standards so that all of these bits and pieces of um, software come together on very beautifully and accessible. Uh, in real time. Today's 3D content has to be photorealistic and that, that is the demand that we have, right? And physically accurate. It's not just, uh, it doesn't just need to look realistic, it has to act and behave like it would in the physical world. And we need uh, the ability to incorporate AI into these systems. And this is where we come in with Omniverse. It, uh, basically, Omniverse connects all of these bits and pieces together as a 3D ecosystem built on open standards. Now, if you've ever tried out NVIDIA Omniverse, you will see that this process of 3D content production from end to end is unbelievably streamlined. So we basically built Omniverse to enable uh, some of our most important projects that you see on screen here, um, such as um, these are all AI projects that you see such as NVIDIA Drive Sim, Isaac Sim for Robotics, Avatar, and NVIDIA Earth 2, a few interesting projects which I will get to in detail later. So Omniverse uh, wasn't possible until now. So why is it happening now? So first of all, with the introduction of NVIDIA RTX, we transformed uh, real-time 3D rendering from a system that produces images that merely look good into a physically accurate simulation of how light interacts with matter. So this actually brings about a huge, huge improvement in rendering quality. You can see the results are drastic. Um, and also with recent advancements in data center and GPU computing, we have this opportunity to leverage uh, graphics supercomputers in the world, running simulations that are too large and compute intensive for traditional computers. Omniverse is designed as a cloud-native and scalable engine that can utilize the full capabilities of the data center. Pixar also uh, went on to invent universal 
field description, USD, and open source this in 2015. So USD basically provides a common standard that allows us to describe virtual worlds with physically accurate pieces that can be composed into a large virtual world. So this, and also lastly, the demand for AI that has spurred a huge demand for world simulation, as I mentioned in the introduction. Uh, in addition to creating a large market for world simulation, AI is also the key to the building of virtual worlds, and it has actually advanced to the point where we can train AI to help us build virtual worlds. So AI will make creating virtual worlds as easy as uh, creating um, web pages today, so generative AI. Now, this brings me back to Omniverse. So what is Omniverse, essentially? Omniverse, basically, is a platform for virtual collaboration and 3D simulation, world simulation. It is a platform built from the ground up to be physically based uh, with the ability to simulate materials, physics, AI, and real-time ray and path tracing. So scenes built in Omniverse um, obey the laws of physics and are true to reality, and they look just as they would in real life. <laughs> And this is, this is quite groundbreaking uh, because it is enabled because of all these technologies um, coming together at once. But then this actually means that this unlocks a whole different level in building virtual worlds. You can build simulations of just about anything now. So if you can see this image uh, on the left, you can see that collaborators are working on different software tools, each composing their part of the scene. Um, whether modeling props, building the environment, texture, lighting, painting, or adding animation or effects, connecting into Omniverse via Omniverse connectors for each of these apps. Now in the center, we see the core of Omniverse, Omniverse Nucleus, the database and collaboration engine that enables the interchange of 3D assets and scene descriptions. Omniverse has been integrated with uh, core NVIDIA technology to also simulate uh, materials, physics, AI, and real-time ray tracing. So um, all of these are also part of the Nucleus collaboration engine. And finally, on the right, users can portal in and out of Omniverse with workstations or, or laptops or um, AR devices, teleporting into Omniverse with VR or out with AR. So anyone can view a scene in Omniverse by streaming RTX to the device. So uh, we basically uh, built Omniverse to enable this creation of virtual worlds so that we can develop and operate virtual worlds and metaverse applications. So this concept of the metaverse today, to me, is the concept of connectedness, of connected virtual worlds interacting with one another as they would in the physical world, right? Um, so imagine this, all things that are designed and built by humans should first be built in a virtual world. Then we can quickly test many iterations of a design in the virtual world at a fraction of the cost of what it would take to build them in a real world, running simulations that are visually and, and physically accurate. Once the digital version of the product is complete, uh, it's built in reality. In most cases today, that's the end of the road for the digital version. But if we link the digital and the real, they can evolve with each other. We can capture data from the physical um, uh, version of the asset uh, through IoT sensors and devices and feed it into its digital counterpart, keeping them perfectly in sync. So I call this concept a digital twin. So when a 3D asset or environment becomes a living digital twin, that gives us incredible superpowers. We can now, we can teleport to any part of the digital twin just like we can in a video game and inspect any aspect of it. So we've built uh, the Omniverse platform to unlock the scope of 3D workflows today and the digital twins of tomorrow. So Omniverse, again, is also a platform for end-to-end -end creation of digital twins. Let's look at some of the technologies that enable Omniverse. There are some of the enabling technologies behind Omniverse. First off, we have um, uh, Omniverse Nucleus, which I talked about earlier, being the core of Omniverse. So this is the central database engine of Omniverse. This 
allows users to share, to collaborate on project data, to store them, and provides this very unique ability to collaborate ac live across multiple third-party applications uh, between multiple users. So for example, you could be a technical artist working on your Maya application, you could be a software engineer, you could be you could have a whole team working on different 3D applications and they could be working on the same file within Omnibus and all the changes are reflected in real time and vice versa. So this is the beauty of Omnibus. This is a very unique ability to collaborate across industry-wide applications. Now this brings me to Omnibus Connect. Connect opens this portal that allows content creation tools to connect to the Omnibus platform and save USD and MDL content. With Omnibus, you can continue to work on your favorite applications and see it reflected back in real time in a central ecosystem. Now, Omnibus Kit is the powerful toolkit for developers and power users to easily create their own custom uh, tools and extensions to accelerate their workflows. So that means if you don't have, you don't see a functionality that you need in Omnibus, you can always build it. If you don't see a connector that connects Omnibus to your favorite application, you can always build it. If you don't like Omnibus in some way, you can always build on top of it. So the possibilities are endless, really, and we've created an open platform just for this interoperability and this ability to customize it to your own liking. Now, Omnibus uh, Simulation is a powerful suite of uh, core and video technology that is actually um, the suite that enables this ground truth representation of a 3D sequence. Now, this in turn is enabled by Omnibus <coughs> Arcade's renderer which is an advanced multi-GPU um, enabled renderer based on NVIDIA RTX that supports both uh, real-time ray tracing and fast traced uh, rendering. Really, uh, um, I should tell you that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. All of these key components come together to create something even greater than itself, to create this enabling force that is omnibus. So let's look at a use case that I mentioned earlier, one of the key use cases of Omnibus, digital twins. Now, um, as we talked about before, when we talk about simulation, we also see a very important application of it emerging, right? Digital twins. And again, uh, because we have separate definitions for everything, we also have a really specific definition for digital twins, a certain version of a digital twin that makes it a true digital twin. A true digital twin in a very basic sense, is a living version of something physical. Now, what does that mean? If you extend this to vast scales, a digital twin is an entire virtual world connected to the physical world. So a true digital twin must possess these four properties. It must be, one, physically accurate. It must be true to reality. It must be constantly synchronized to the physical twin. It must operate at precision time and not the lowest possible time, precision time. And fourthly, it must encompass multiple autonomous systems. That means it has to incorporate all of the AI technology that is enabling it within the system. So an omnibus digital twin is a large scale physically accurate simulation of an industrial asset, a process, or an environment with multiple autonomous systems perfectly synchronized with real world data streams. So this is, this, this is the vision that we strive to achieve when we talk about creating digital twins using NVIDIA Omnibus. Now, um, the, so when, when something actually becomes a living digital twin, uh, the kind of benefits it gives are tremendous. So like I said before, we can teleport to any part of the digital twin just like we can in a video game and inspect any aspect of it reflected from the real world. We can also run simulations to predict the near future or test many possible futures for us to pick the most optimal one. This requires multiple 3D assets and worlds that are interconnected, and this makes for an extremely complex 3D workflow like we just discussed, um, with multiple stakeholders, with pipelines, and multiple AI systems working in sync together, and environments. And this is traditionally the biggest benefit that Omnibus brings into the system. So Omnibus, so if you have a digital twin in Omnibus, it will be true real-time living simulations that operate in precise timing, where the virtual representation is constantly synchronized to the physical world. 
But how do we get there? How do we how do we start building digital twins with Omniverse? And where can Omniverse come in? I wasn't joking when I said it's end to end. Um, not all digital twins are built in the same way, but uh, and depending on the particular competency of um, your software vendor, your your team, your organization, anyone can have a small part to play in the creation of a digital twin. And the beauty of Omniverse is that you can enter the workflow of a digital twin at any point in this cycle that we see. Right, so here you see, you've seen that I've broken down the creation of a digital twin into four super high level areas. The first one is <clears throat> full fidelity visualization. This is where customers are aggregating 3D data sets in full fidelity, adding materials and lighting and visualizing in real time. Now, this requires a platform like Omniverse to harness open standards like USD and multi-GPU scalable resource, compute resources uh, to enable users to visualize these massive scenes in real time. Now, um, if you already have that going on for you, if you already have your full fidelity um, visualized Data set. So several people come into the cycle with a data set fully formed. They they will be like, you know, look, I have this 3D 3D model, this CAD accurate 3D model of, of of my house. Help me make it a digital twin. Next, so it's not just important to have a scene look like uh, it would in real life. It also should behave in a way that is similar to your real life um, physics behavior. This is where physics simulation comes in. So simulations of physical systems can be added via real-time sensor inputs or real-time simulations through microservices. Um, and we also have NVIDIA Omniverse's uh, physics SDK for true-to-life physics simulations, for particle simulations, fluid simulations, for material simulations. And next we have sensor inputs. Now the connection of the physical twin to the digital twin is imperative for a true living digital twin, right? So constantly streaming new information from the physical twin requires the connection of industrial automation and IoT sensors. And Omniverse can help with that because it, it has connectors to connect any of your 3D applications in your custom um, data or your custom stream of sensor data. Um, and it can have a bi-directional connection, which means that it, it can have a bi-directional flow of data. So whatever is updated in the physical twin will go to the digital twin and whatever happens in the digital twin will be fed back to the physical twin. And finally, we have autonomous systems uh, through digital twin and composes multiple autonomous robotic systems operating in the same space time. So this helps to optimize and operate the virtual twin and transfer learnings to the physical twin. Again, a bi-directional exchange of data. Now, the best part is, like I said, depending on your individual competencies, you may enter at any point in this cycle with Omniverse. Just plug in your data and get going through the rest of the cycle. So, um, let's look, take a look at some of the basic building blocks to building digital twins that I talked about. A bit more in detail to get a foundation for building a digital twin. So the first one is um, full fidelity visualization. So like I said, commonly the first step, the very first step you would take to build a digital twin is to build a virtual replica. Visually, you want the, you want the twin to look like the physical version of it. And uh, one of Omniverse's biggest differentiators to a game engine is the ability to bring in CAD accurate large scale data sets <coughs> and visualize them in real time. It allows you to aggregate 3D data sets from different tools. So often you would have bits and pieces of 3D models of buildings or infrastructure or machines or machine parts in different applications. You have to bring them all together. There's Omnibus for you to do that. Uh, it also leverages multi-GPU compute resources, uh, which means you can create these resources from scratch. It is also a content creation platform where designers and artists can work live and collaborate live to create their own environment. Um, it can, you can also benefit from om, uh, omniverse materials, physics, physically accurate real-time ray tracing and fast trace rendering, and that's amazing. The power of fast trace rendering, um, it goes a long way in ensuring a photorealistic uh, version of your physical world. 
The next uh, part is your custom 3D pipeline orchestration. So Omniverse is a, a platform that is a reference, uh, reference development platform, which means it is open and it is easily extensible. So we also provide building blocks for you to build your own connectors, your own extensions or applications. So you can leverage all of NVIDIA's core technology, rendering, simulation materials without having to build it yourself and yet build your own application on top of it that leverages this core technology. So Omniverse Kit is a framework that allows you to build your own applications on top of the stack. Um, you don't have to rebuild the entire pipeline. You can just build tools here and there to connect, to enhance, to extend. So that's, that's another great thing about Omniverse. And finally, uh, you might have heard of synthetic data generation, but let me take a moment to recap what it is. Now, training perception models requires a large and diverse data set. Assembling these data sets can be costly, time consuming, dangerous, and even impossible for certain corner cases. By leveraging Omniverse Replicator, which is an application within Omniverse, you can bootstrap the training task with synthetic data generation. So SDG also addresses um, challenges related to long tail anomalies, bootstrap model training where no training data is available as well as online reinforcement uh, learning. It fills in the gaps in the data sets that you have generating lifelike data that can be used to train more robust models. Um, or you can use them to generate scenes of your own, different combinations of your world, uh, different combinations of worlds of your own automatically. So generating data. So uh, now that we've come to synthetic data generation, let me take a moment to take you through our application, which is Omniverse Replicator. So this is a very useful, this is perhaps your starting point if you want to get started with synthetic data generation using Omniverse. So basically Replicator leverages Omniverse platform's core materials, rendering technology to pro uh, produce physically accurate 3D data that is indistinguishable from reality. So Replicator has actually, um, it has built-in support for domain randomization, and this allows for changes in texture, color, lighting, and placement. It also features support for different types of data, includes, including um, bounding boxes, depth, and segmentation. Um, so if you're a developer, you can output the data sets in KD format, making it easier to leverage NVIDIA Tau. And we also come with multiple deployment options. So Replicator actually has different versions of it. So um, you can see that Isaac Replicator is there for, uh, which is an SDG tool that we use for robotics applications. Uh, we also have Drive Replicator. This is used for autonomous vehicles. And we also have Omniverse Replicator in itself, which is uh, different from these in the sense that we use it for generating 3D worlds and 3D content in general. Uh, so um, this also cuts down your, tra uh, the, your, your training, your retraining time to hours instead of weeks. So this is an insanely valuable tool. I'm going to take you through a very short walkthrough of how you can get started <coughs> with Replicator, right? So and the foundational components of Omniverse Replicator. This. Okay, so how does Replicator actually work? So there are four main components to Replicator. We will start with randomizers. Uh, Replicator's randomization tools allow developers to easily create domain randomized scenes, quickly sampling from assets, materials, lighting, and camera position. Um, you can see here, I guess you saw just now, that the generation process is super fast. And um, this, is, this is beautiful because it allows you to not only fill in the gaps of your own data, it allows you to automatically generate realistic looking worlds uh, on a massive scale. Next, we have the Omni Synthetic Data Extension. Uh, this is the lowest level component of the Replicator software stack, and um, it is a built-in extension in Omniverse Kit SDK. So this extension uh, provides a low-level integration with the RTX renderer and the Omni Graph computation system. So this is the component that powers the computation graphs for Replicator's ground truth extraction uh, annotators. Uh, passing AOVs, uh, arbitrary um, output variables, uh, from the renderer through the annotator. Next, uh, the, annotator, uh, the annotation system itself ingests uh, the AOVs and other output from the synthetic data ex uh, extension to produce physically, um, to produce 
precisely labeled annotations for um, your GNN training. So here you can see what you just saw was a real-time visualization of the built-in tight uh, 2D bounding box and semantic segmentation uh, annotator. So if you're a developer, you can easily write custom annotator components for extracting information relevant uh, information that's relevant to your specific network. And Replicator makes this very easy to get up and going with like just a few lines of code. Finally, we have Replicator Writer. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, but writers basically process the images and other annotations from the annotators and produce DNN-specific data formats for training. So writers can output to local storage over the network or cloud-based storage backends. Um, and it, this allows generated data to stay on the GPU for training and avoids any additional I.O. at all. So this is, this is a brief overview of synthetic data generation, and I wanted to highlight this process in particular uh, with Omnibus because this is not often associated with a 3D content creation platform like Omnibus. So um, this, is, this is one segment of creating a digital trend that I wanted to highlight today. In, um, basically, with tools like Omnibus Replicator for synthetic data generation and this workflow in the digital twin pipeline, Omnibus provides end-to-end -end solutions for the entire digital twin creation workflow. And it's, it's, it's been wonderful because we actually see Omnibus emerging as the foundational platform for digital twins across industries and across a multitude of skills. Really, you can see some of the examples um, here we have use cases ranging from the factory skill to literally the, the planetary skill, Earth to Trina, as you can see here, which is um, a very interesting project where they simulate a, there's a physical, there's a digital twin of planet Earth for climate and weather modeling. So that's pretty amazing, really. And it shows at the scale, it shows the massive scale at which Omni Omniverse can easily operate on. Um, recently, we also had partnerships with BMW to build the factory of the future, as you can see there, and Amazon Robotics, who are building AI-enabled digital twins of their warehouses. So you can see that there are several different use cases, and there are more happening. There are much, much more. These are just few examples taken from radically different industries. Um, digital twins are solving some of the world's greatest challenges and all of them using Omnibus, and all of this has only just begun. So I'm really excited to see where this goes, and I hope this gives you an insight into what is possible, not just with Omnibus, but with digital twins and the concept of simulating virtual worlds in general. And Omnibus is just there to help you get started on this journey, that's about it. But the concept of it is something that's radical. So yeah. Um, Coming back to platform-specific information, there are a number of resources out there that can help you get started. So this, this is just a brief overview of, of um, the resources available out there. We have a collection of a lot of tutorials and everything that you can check out online to get started right away with like the individual editions. But more than that, I think I'm excited to see what the world has, what the community has to create using Omnibus. So I'm more interested in the end results of this. So thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you so much, and I hope you will have something useful to take away from this. Uh, sure. Ah, okay. So uh, the first question is: Nvidia is a company which has introduced the word. Metaverse to the world by CEO keynote speech. Why is NVIDIA naming the new project as Omnibus? Let me correct you there a little bit. I think um, it was Meta who introduced, they didn't really introduce it, but they brought it into the public consciousness with uh, Metaverse, the concept of Metaverse, which actually came in last year's keynote for Meta, which was late 2021. But Omnibus, NVIDIA Omnibus has been around since 2019. Oh. Yeah. So this um, this is, and the concept of the metaverse is not a new concept per se. It first came about in the 1980s with a novel um, um, called Snow Crash uh, by Neil Stephenson. And it introduced the concept of omniverse as something, it was a very sci-fi sort of term, but it has um, 
sorry, it introduced the concept of a metaverse. Um, so it has evolved into something, anything related to VR these days. So it's, it's, there's a lot of definitions floating around, which some of which are, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a little here and there, but I, I like to bring it all in together to, um, to mean the concept of connected virtual. So metaverse is a concept of connected virtual worlds, and omniverse is the name of a product. It just so happens that they share some similarities. But what's wonderful is that Omniverse is, can help build worlds for the metaverse, which is an overall concept. So I, I hope that clarifies the difference. For rare or costly situations in real, is it possible to build a digital twin for rare or costly situations in real life? So how can we produce it? Hmm. For rare or costly situations, so I think what it means, you can get started building a very small prototype of a digital twin right away without any resources except maybe your your GPU, like a single GPU. Yeah. So you can, if you have RTX on your device, you can actually get started building building a a POC of a digital twin, by the way. Essentially, what is a digital twin? It's, it's a system. It's a system that if you have a dashboard, if you have a dashboard that, that basically uh, has all the data that you need and it's constantly in sync, that is a digital twin, but only it's it's not visual. It's just a series of text, right? So if you want to simulate something without a lot of added cost, you can always build a dashboard. But if you want to simulate the visual components of it, um, you can get started with Omniverse's um, individual edition uh, to try it out, and you can you can basically build your own a uh, proper functional digital twin with using all of the individual edition resources. It, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, you only need license when you scale up, but you can get going straight away. Yeah, so I, I hope that helps. Sorry, uh, can you help me? <coughs> It is interesting that NVIDIA's Omniverse is based on Pixar's USD. Is there any reason for it? Oh yes, uh, so the reason for it is uh, USD is actually considered uh, the HTML of open world, so uh, of, of 3D worlds, right? So USD actually has this ability to, um, it's to bring in, to be, to, so USD is a foundational component of Omniverse. So you, any file that's in USD, can be viewed in Omniverse. So, and because it is used across the 3D production industry, it started with 3D visualization and movie industry. So, it started being used as a foundational um, file format for 3D workflows in the movie industry and animation. And then it became very widespread because of its interoperability. It can it can bring in different data types and, and bridge gaps between different languages. So, it sort of became like HTML. Right, of, but except it was in 3D instead of 2D. So then when NVIDIA decided to start Omniverse based on open standards and also um, interoperability with a focus on different applications, uh, USD was a top choice because it was open, it was extensive, you, you can you could use it with any any different any kind of software. So that's why USD. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.